So, welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, showing up uh, this early to morning. <coughs> this morning. Um, I'm from Get, and we were talking about our TV experience, Level Up. So, uh, who are we? I am uh, Thomas Pronsta. Uh, I work for Get. I worked for Get for 10 years. No, six years. I worked 10 years as a developer. Uh, and recently became a uh, manager for the software engineers uh, at Get. Uh, I happen to follow the Android team closely, um, not normally something I do. Um, and I like to hire people whose name matches my own, if you write bad, uh, regular expressions. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm uh, Thomas Pettersen. I worked, uh, I, I'm working at the Net Company. I'm the tech lead uh, mobility there. I've been uh, doing um, Android stuff for about eight years. Um, worked closely with uh, NRK. Uh, and um, yeah, do a lot of uh, cool stuff. Um, we're going to talk about um, uh, what we're making today. Uh, we're going to talk about why uh, and what is Android TV, how things have gone so far. Uh, how we do, do design and uh, actually develop <coughs> the hardware. Uh, talk about the quite uh, horrific uh, approval and release process of Google. Uh, and uh, what uh, the future does hold. So, um, what are we making and why? Um, yeah. So, um, I'm going to start with the why bit. Um, well, today, this is the current state. We have um, like a fragmented situation where a lot of the customers are on the old UI, you can see on your right. Um, and there's a new one that came out uh, a couple of years ago on your left, uh, which has a lot fewer customers using it. Uh, what happened here is um, we were rolling out the left one. Um, reception wasn't that great. Uh, we had to halt the upgrade process. Uh, so, we have today um, a lot more customers on the old platform who are happy with the speed and experience than we have people on the new one that's happy. So, what we're making now <coughs> is a next generation Getbox and we base it on Android TV, an uh, operator tier solution, um, where we get um, a system image made by a hardware provider. Uh, while we de develop the um, experience ourselves, uh, the launcher menu, the TV app, everything you can see on screen, we will make ourselves. And everything is backed by our own in-house uh, infrastructure for play out. So that's also new. And uh, it looks like this. Uh, it's fairly simple. It's uh, made for a, a cinematic experience where you have uh, easy navigatable components, you have uh, a lot of images and a uh, uh, few texts. And we have this, which is the launcher, that uh, makes you want to browse content. And we have the live TV app, where you can stream live uh, channels. Uh, you can stream uh, everything from, uh, from uh, your uh, channels to third-party channels that you download. But, um, uh, yeah, and also we have uh, EPGs <coughs> and uh, all content that you want. So, uh, it's not just an app, it's a system. Uh, it's not just an another app, it's not just another TV app, it's an entire system. So we have the Getbox. Uh, the Getbox is uh, what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, we use both streaming and DVB, which is the uh, regular cable network. Uh, Get has uh, a huge infrastructure uh, based around cable TV, and we try to utilize that in parallel with the, the streaming technologies. We do our own uh, authentications, and uh, we can uh, plug in whatever viewing device we want. And also, we have three apps on board. Uh, we have the setup app, which uh, does the setups for us, uh, makes you onboard the user. We have the launcher app, which uh, is for browsing content, and we have the live TV app for uh, streaming or viewing live TV. And uh, these are separate apps living uh, on their own with their own UI, their own business logic, and the network and storage. But all of them uh, are pinning down into the um, 
system itself. So we have uh, exposed uh, APIs uh, that are private normally that we use uh, to, to gain access to the hardware. We do security in a, uh, quite ex uh, an advanced form. Uh, Tom is going to talk about that later. And we do custom implementation in the hardware. So um, why did we go away from what we had? Well, apart from the obvious uh, reasons I mentioned earlier, um, we were experiencing um, uh, some problems. We had um, a TV platform that is delivered by a large vendor, which has a lot of customers around the world. Um, we as a customer is small in their eyes, and we have minimal influence upon the platform they create. Uh, we are allowed to do changes, but they're getting it implemented is expensive and it's slow. <coughs> so of course the vendor wants to keep the number of uh, uh, changes and modifications down because they have to maintain everything. And uh, having several clients around the world, you have to um, kind of coordinate this. Um, all work, planning and stuff done with these people are in a waterfall process. So we kind of give them a um, order and they have to give us a price and we agree and then they go away, do something, come back and then suddenly a year later we have something that perhaps isn't what we wanted. So yeah, um, oops. Yeah, so the, the ability to um, influence the platform harder uh, more and uh, get away from um, their restrictions uh, is the main uh, reason we're doing it ourselves. Uh, also, um, we have uh, traditionally had a little or no access to uh, any statistics on the platform. Uh, the third party kind of owns the playout data themselves. Um, so we can't tell you which show is the most popular show on live TV. Um, not great, um, so, but this is changing. Uh, we are starting to use uh, Eubora um, and get uh, viewing data for um, for uh, all boxes and quality metrics, etc. Um, so we can tell if there's quality issues in the in the wild, uh, and we can also tell you which show is more popular and use that data. Um, the plan is to use the data for better deals, better service. Um, so we're looking forward to that part. Uh, Eubora is kind of centered around uh, the client experience of the playout. So it won't tell you if, uh, if it's the customer's network that is the issue or your servers or the back end not responding or something. It, all it tells you is that the, the client used like 10 seconds to join the stream and um, he experienced buffering at uh, these moments in time. So um, uh, adding further quality reporting is something we're looking into. Yeah, so what happened here? Um, the first step was to um, kind of prove that we could do this ourselves. Um, so we had to prove our competence and the ability to create a solution at all. Uh, during the spring of 2018, um, two teams were set down and uh, given the task to develop an Android TV solution, um, the local Get team and the original vendor. Um, they were using their off-the-shelf product, uh, modifying it uh, to fit our wants and desires, um, <coughs> while we were using like standard hardware and uh, standard Android image, creating an app on that. Um, we did this for a while, um, but uh, the hardware manufacturer kind of forced us to select the middleware to use, the middleware and driver implementation, uh, because they didn't want to support two, um, two projects in parallel, um, because the kind of they have to do double the work, um, create images and do QA and stuff. Uh, our competition, of course, suggested that we should use their middleware. Um, that was not a viable option in our eyes because that would mean that they could block us if they needed, uh, saying we have to integrate with some service or give them some parameters or whatever. 
So um, we um, we were able to uh, land this and use the hardware vendor's middleware, which is kind of straightforward. Um, and uh, when the time came, we actually had proved our ability to do this, and we did win the com uh, competition. So that's great. Hooray! Yeah, so um, uh, what is Android TV? Uh, just a quick 101, uh, how it works. This is uh, Android TV uh, on Android 9. Uh, it's uh, fairly easy, straightforward to use. It's, uh, you can browse content, uh, you can select apps, you can go into the apps, you can see, uh, uh, you can see a stream of what's <coughs> next, you can integrate. Here it's uh, next Netflix with, the, with an app. Uh, you have uh, voice recognition and you can do uh, notifications and stuff. Uh, Android TV was developed by Google in-house. It's a Google product. It's not an AOSP. So uh, they have control of the platform and can decide what they, what they want to do with it. Um, they use Android technologies and frameworks uh, on the bottom. And um, uh, it's mostly made for games and videos, streaming and sharing content on a TV. Uh, it was released in June 2014 as a successor to the failed Google TV. Google TV was, um, how many have heard about Google TV? Yeah, quite a few. It's uh, based on Chrome. So uh, when they tried to do this, it, uh, it uh, soon became clear that it's not a viable option. Uh, it's not possible to do uh, the things they want. So, okay, let's rewrite the whole thing and then make it from scratch. Uh, as a part of the launch, they launched the ADT1, which was the dev kit, and they launched the Nexus player. How many has the Nexus player? Ah, three heroes. <laughs> um, uh, cool, uh, cool thing. Actually, what we're building is kind of in this area. Um, and you can navigate uh, in two ways. You can navigate by a remote control, or you can navigate uh, with your voice. You can also connect the keyboards and do stuff, but... Uh, Normally, this is the preferred inputs. And for the UI, uh, you have a set of um, a set of components. Uh, you can use most of the Android components as is, but uh, you want to uh, uh, use these for uh, viewing. It's uh, custom-made components for Android TV by Google uh, that uh, makes you do stuff. So in uh, in Android, you have the concept of rows and uh, navigation up and down it's, uh, between the roads and uh, along the road. Uh, you have a row fragment to sol solve that. You have a vertical grid fragment for having a grid. You have guided step fragments for step-by-step uh, -step, uh, interactions. Uh, search, if you want that, which is built in with, uh, with voice recognition. So you have a lot of um, simple components to use to build your UI. Uh, it's recommended to use those because then you can build something that's fami familiar between apps uh, and everybody's using them. On the bottom, we have the live TV app, uh, which uh, are coherent to this <laughs> schematics. So we have, uh, we have the live TV app here, uh, which uh, you, yeah, we can plug in whatever the input we want. We have the IP TV, we have a DVB or a cable, we have streaming. Uh, for different inputs. And the inputs uh, store stuff in the TV provider uh, and is being displayed in the TV app through sessions or the TV input the manager service. So everything is uh, scalable. You can plug in whatever uh, input you want and you can, um, uh, can uh, do stuff with it. So why did we go for Android TV? Uh, why did we... Uh, you have... In, in our uh, realm, we have uh, mobile, we have uh, net versions, and we have Apple TV. The Apple TV version is actually really popular. Uh, many people say that, oh, we don't use the Getbox anymore, we have the Apple TV app. How many have Apple TV Get? Yeah, actually. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, on Apple TV, <coughs> we don't get much branding or control at all. Um, so uh, going with that platform isn't kind of uh, building up our brand at all, uh, they um, they kind of bind us on our hands and feet, say, okay, you can have this app, but you will not be able to brand anything. The Apple logo is supposed to be here. Uh, yeah, so d getting the kind of level of, uh, um, 
of uh, branding we want is not feasible on that platform. Is it possible to have a cable on Apple TV? Yeah, that's also an issue. Um, you would have to do all out streaming. You can't connect uh, classic uh, multicast uh, to the Apple TV. So, yeah, so uh, we did uh, look into the market. Um, we wanted something that, um, that was fast. Um, we had some control. Uh, we went with Android um, because we can build the box we want. Uh, we still have to abide by the Google rules, uh, but they are negotiable. Uh, even though it says something on their website, you can contact them and get them to waive stuff. Um, and it gives us a lot more freedom. Um, we could have gone for a Linux box, which is kind of like the traditional way to do this. Uh, but then you have to create drivers, you're building the entire platform, and the timeline is way longer, um, not a feasible option. The app space also is kind of non-existent. You have to get approval from every everyone you want to create an app. You have to create deals. Um, so with Android, we get like an operating system designed for device usage, uh, and uh, the last reason we ch choose Android is the market competition is virtually zero, so that kind of limits our way ability to choose something else. Yeah, so uh, what about the road so far? Uh, the mission we had when we started was that we should support all features already available. Uh, and uh, it's a, you have the old boxes and we try to introduce a new one. The main focus is, oh, we have to at least have all the things the old one has. And that uh, makes the MVP quite large. Um, and then uh, we, we had to add some new features. So we started out in uh, September 2017 with a prototype. Uh, worked with that for <coughs> quite some time. Uh, and in March, uh, they said, OK, uh, let's, uh, let's build this. We had. In this, uh, in this time, we had to develop uh, in parallel with two teams. Uh, and we say, OK, if we're going to go with our version, we should release in September. So we're doing prototyping, proof of concept, and then say, oh, we have a date. So OK, we have to do stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we, we developed. Yeah, and uh, this was around the point where Thomas suggested, hey, we should talk about this on mobile era. We have been out for a couple of months. and. Yeah, no worries. We can tell the awesome story about how we did this. Yes, and November is after September, <laughs> at least. Uh, so uh, in May, uh, we actually won. We, we said, OK, we're going to go for this platform. So uh, we, we had to stop prototyping and then produce real code, uh, doing uh, stabilizing, doing stuff uh, uh, on a more solid scale. And then June hit, and we said, oh, it's uh, vacation. Uh, we have to uh, yeah, hold, uh, hold everything. And uh, after a while, we tried to, OK, let's uh, release. So it should be released in September, and then it should be released in October. And uh, we're here. Uh, we should have talked about uh, how, it, how it's hit the market, but uh, we're getting really close. Yeah. So uh, what happened there? Um, we need features. Uh, we started out wanting to create the MVP, um, but uh, that's not the most uh, welcome thing in the organization always. We need, of course, support for uh, multicast technologies, cloud recordings, transactional video on demand, which is basically just movie, movie rental, binge watching, Prova file supports, uh, integration of uh, systems X, Y, and Z, stuff like that. So scope creep, yeah, basically. Yeah, a lot of those uh, delaying the, the process of release. <coughs> yeah. So um, what was funny was that in March, we kind of had support for all the basic functionality, the pause, rewind, start from the beginning, uh, using the HTTP uh, unicast solution. But uh, when you have a lot of clients and um, you are responsible for the backbone yourself, the, um, multicast way of distributing um, TV is much cheaper uh, on bandwidth, uh, but it lacks a lot of features the user expects, like pausing and stuff. So um, we had to create a mix, uh, 
and also the our experience with Unicast, uh, the HTTP way, is okay. We kind of started that two years ago ourselves. But uh, with the multicast, we knew absolutely nothing. So uh, what came with the multicast bit is also DRM, uh, not the most sexy thing in the world. Um, there's a legacy DRM system from the third party vendor in use, uh, and we have to implement support for that on the Android TV platform. Fortunately, that is not our responsibility. That's the hardware vendor, uh, and it's kind of transparent for us but it creates a dependency. So when they say we can't deliver this until uh, December or whatever, then okay, we can't actually ship because they are stopping us. Yes, so uh, we had to design everything from the ground up. Uh, we designed the everything from the hardware to the remotes to, uh, to UI. Uh, we tried to, uh, to build the components that are uh, expressive, cinematic, Beautiful. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, you use uh, quite a lot of images, small text. This is the season chooser. So you have a series with the season and uh, episodes on the season. Uh, you also <coughs> have uh, TVOD or uh, rental movies uh, that are coming. It's not uh, there yet. This is the design for it, uh, making you able to, uh, to uh, easily see how much does it cost and uh, what's the most popular we, we do a lot of uh, uh, editorial uh, collections and uh, present uh, the editorial collections here. Uh, and also we have, uh, this is from the setup app, uh, where you have a step uh, guided step-by-step -step, uh, fragment for uh, welcoming you, onboarding, and uh, do stuff. Uh, and uh, when we design something like this, we have to follow the four rules. Uh, it's casual consumption which means that the, the most times you use Android TV is when you're in a casual setting. You don't use this as a work uh, platform or, uh, for, or uh, for specific stuff. You do uh, mainly consumption of uh, multimedia or games. Also, you want a cinematic experience, making it um, uh, beautiful to watch, uh, to be entertained, uh, and to have a lightweight uh, interaction. So uh, you have to navigate uh, with the remote control. You have to um, do uh, things really easy. So you cannot do navigation uh, quite hard. And also touch is uh, not available. And also uh, they, they insist on having a shared context. It means that you're probably going to do Android TV with other people. It's, uh, it's you're in the couch, you're watching TV with persons, or you're playing a multiplayer game. So you have to take that in, uh, in context. So uh, also you try to uh, fit the content on a huge screen instead of a mobile, and it's far away from you. So you, you have to, uh, uh, to limit the amount of text, uh, so you don't have to read a lot of stuff. Also, when we do um, uh, Android TV design, you often see this. To ensure a great user experience, apps for TV device must, uh, be sp must meet specific requirements for usability. Only apps that meet the following uh, quality criteria will qualify as an Android TV app on Google Play. So that says that you cannot just do the uh, normal Android thing and just release whatever you have. Uh, you actually have to follow some guidelines. Uh, it has to be beautiful. It has to be easy to use. Uh, and in addition to that, we're a launcher. Uh, we do the UI for the entire system, so we don't uh, have the normal rules. We have uh, much more. Uh, this is an example for what we have. This is just one, 2.1.1, placement of apps and games list. So we're going to read the first one. The list of installed apps and games must be visible on screen above the fold <coughs> after navigating at, one, uh, at most one layer deep or scrolling at most one screen from screen zero. It's really specific. It's, uh, it's uh, many of these uh, rules that you have to comply to. If not, you, you're not gonna be uh, approved. So, and you have to design for remote. So m the main interaction are sideways and up and down. You cannot do uh, uh, like uh, across or uh, jump many by holding or something. Uh, this is our evolution of the remote controls. We, we did the remote control design, uh, did user testing, did uh, field testing on uh, the remote controls. 
So the first one was kind of a prototype. Uh, we had a home button, back button, and uh, back and forth. This is inspired by a lot of others uh, which have only a, a few buttons and a ring, like Apple TV or a Samsung Uni remote. But then we have to, okay, uh, we see that we have a quite a lot of legacy. Uh, people are used to having uh, uh, numbers, are used to having uh, some kind of a TV control that's not only this. So after user testing, we found out after a few iterations that the, the most uh, right one here is the one that people like the most. Uh, and it evolved into that. So I think that's going to be the production one. Yeah, it is. And uh, the second one from the left is the current remote control we ship with um, Getbox 2s and Micros. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about how to work with a hardware <coughs> manufacturer. It's a really cool experience. Uh, it's kind of different from uh, what we have uh, when we do just an app. Uh, so uh, for us, it's uh, when we use or we work closely with a hardware vendor, we can do stuff like request new hardware features. Uh, we uh, we say, okay, we want uh, this amount of RAM. We want uh, we don't need a hard drive because we're going to do cloud uh, recording. Uh, we want uh, these inputs, both cable TV and uh, uh, network. And you can uh, add and build the box together with them. We, we also did the, um, the remote control. Uh, and you can make changes to the platform. So they, they build a platform for us on Android TV, and we build on top of that. Uh, and you can say stuff like, OK, we want to expose some hidden API to do stuff uh, to the hardware. Um, also, you get full cooperation and a shared responsibility, meaning that uh, we work together as a team uh, whatever we release, we're both uh, responsible for. Uh, so they want the product to be as good as we do. We're, we're not just being handed here, work with that, and you do whatever you want. They're actually responsible as well. And that's a cool approach to, to the whole concept of uh, app development, I think. OK, security, everyone's favorite topic, right? <laughs> um, so this is uh, kind of a big requirement. Um, you can't let them everyone watch whatever they want, apparently. Um, we have to have uh, authorization, customer author authorization to view stuff. The movie studios have very hard requirements on this part. Um, they specify which DRM solutions are good enough, etc. Um, so yeah. Uh, historically, uh, you also have. Uh, back history here where users who are used to getting a box don't authenticate. They plug it in and it just works. Uh, it's supposed to be like having a key. Uh, the box can be trusted. Um, so what you're seeing here is uh, that part, the authentication uh, architectural drawing. Um, yeah, we, uh, we didn't know anything about this. Um, we tried to talk to people. Uh, the people in our organization had no idea how this worked. It was delivered by the third party vendor. Uh, we had some suggestions. We found some Android APIs that were supposed to support us, but unfortunately they were on mobile only, so that didn't help. Uh, <coughs> so what we did, we, we, we found a trusted execution environment you see here. Um, we, we sketched up this thing. Um, we went to the hardware vendor, we showed them this, and they were like, oh, this is kind of similar to what we do with the OTA solution. Okay, thank you, but why didn't you tell us this when we asked you the last time? So, yeah, uh, it isn't perfect, but uh, then again, they kind of confirmed that this is the level of security they do their own uh, solution on, so we can't be worse than what we already have on the box. So um, I'm not going to go into details on the drawing here. All I can say is that the, the parity check is uh, something they added, where uh, the operating system image all the time verifies itself. And if you tamper with it, the box will reboot and restore, uh, which is also great for development. Uh, yeah, we have that on development boxes. <laughs> so. Uh, if we try to do a routing and uh, actually do stuff uh, through ADB, it just reboots and uh, restores everything. So it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going over to communication, 
like with the security here, uh, communication is always difficult. Um, when you add in French accents, cultural differences, etc., you get a problem. Um, of course, the video chat solutions aren't approved by neither their firewalls or our firewalls, so we need to call them. Uh, great, people are sitting in their cars and they are uh, on trains, etc. Uh, so, yeah, communication, not that great. Also, you call in, uh, you have like a very specific software or driver issue. Uh, you ask uh, the people you're speaking to and they're like, ah, uh, we will, no, that's no problem. We'll, uh, we'll get the software engineers in to solve this. Call back next week. Um, and time flies. So next week, uh, everyone is present. But uh, yeah, the only one talking is the software manager. So um, kind of um, hierarchy is bigger than we're used to. So uh, as an example, uh, we need to do the hybrid TV solution where we go from cable to streaming. So we flew down, we were there for a week, we got absolutely nothing out of it. We go home, we flew them to Norway, and here's our API. It took us 30 minutes, that meeting. Uh, so uh, there's something strange going on there. <laughs> kind of uh, getting, um, getting approval for stuff is much harder, apparently. And of course, when we had established uh, familiarity with the team, they kind of screwed us over and replaced the entire team. So not the greatest uh, experience there. <laughs> yeah, and the project process is the waterfall. Um, this is, uh, yeah, nobody likes waterfall. Uh, we, we do analysis, we, uh, we say, okay, we want uh, this uh, hardware feature or with this uh, uh, exposed API. Okay, that's cool. But uh, then they uh, do design for it, they do uh, implementation, testing, QA, and then uh, we get something. And that could take quite some time. Uh, so uh, when we do need quick feedback and uh, just give us a nightly build, give us something to work with, they say, no, it's not been through QA, we cannot do this. And QA is like two weeks from now. So uh, we have a lot of uh, issues with uh, regarding change requests. Um, we have a lot of bugs that uh, keeps popping up, and uh, uh, we put them on a list. We have a weekly bug review <coughs> meeting, and they say, okay, um, this should be fixed in the next version, but it's... Uh, they have absolutely no reason to say that. It's just a new version, yeah. so yeah, you have <laughs> it to test it yourself. Yes, and uh, we, we don't know if it's uh, actually fixed. So uh, the QA is, uh, is uh, blocking us here. And the timeline is making it hard to be agile. We are trying to be agile, and they're trying to be waterfall, and we're kind of dependent on them. So it's, uh, it quickly became, it becomes a waterfall <laughs> for us, too. Also, we have, um, I think they don't, uh, they don't think we know anything. Uh, we get the questions like, do you know how to push an APK onto the device? Like one year into the process. Uh, and that's uh, kind of insulting because yeah. that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, even I know how to do that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of those uh, questions. On Slack the other day, it was something about pregnant, but. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's with the French. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, approval and release. Uh, this is our nightmare. Uh, how many actually do Android development? Yeah, most of you. Uh, and Android approval is kind of straightforward. You make an app, crappy or not, and you just release it, and 12 hours later, it's uh, on everybody's phone, or it should be. Uh, but the process here is that you have to go through uh, three certifications uh, after you submit. So you have to go to a GMS core test suite, then you have to go to a compatibility test suite, and then a security test suite. And those three <coughs> combined take one month to do. And that's really hard. Uh, you have a feedback loop of one month. So if you have to do a new build and release, it takes one month to actually get it out there. Uh, Google does uh, over 10,000 automated tests. Uh, the first time we failed on four of 10,000 and was not good enough, we had to, to do a new release and it took another month. So this is uh, something that's uh, quite uh, expensive for us uh, and is 
part of why we are not out there yet. Yeah, um, we had the idea that, okay, let's um, get this box into the hands of customers as soon as possible. Uh, we want feedback. Uh, but Google was like, uh, hello, uh, hold on. Uh, no boxes goes into the hands of customers before your certified Android TV. Okay, uh, can we do employees? Yeah, okay, you can do that. Limited number. <laughs> yeah. So what we're stuck with is kind of people with a lot of back history, a lot of knowledge of the existing platforms, etc. It doesn't give like the correct feedback in my eyes. No. So this is a problem we have. Yeah, actually, when we worked at the uh, NRK uh, with the team here, uh, uh, we had over 8,000 beta testers giving us feedback and uh, making us uh, do a product that which was right. But here we have employees, and they are experienced users. They are uh, biased as hell. So uh, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to get the feedback you want to make the product right. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Um, this is yours, right? Yeah, yeah, it's mine. Uh, so we do over-the-air updates or OTAs. Uh, for this, is it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard. Uh, you want to just push new features to uh, to the boxes. Uh, for now, we have an, uh, a system in place that uh, works for the entire system image. So you can uh, you can do the entire box from the from the from the bottom with all three APKs on board or apps and uh, exposed APIs and so on. But we don't have anything for APK updates yet. Uh, the main reasons for that is uh, Google. They want to uh, approve everything. So uh, we, we want to launch a system image and then just update the content as we go. But it's, it's not there yet. I hope we're going to get there. Yeah. Um, we didn't get approved for the Google Play bit either. So we can't just up, uh, update the APKs, ah. uh, which is not great. Okay, but someday we're going we're going to get there. I hope. Yeah. And then you have uh, uh, s uh, we did uh, want to do this properly. We wanted to uh, have an Android product out there, which was going to be awesome to the crowd. So we had uh, a memo released internally about secrecy. This is okay. This is hush hush. Uh, nobody talks about it. Nobody uh, says anything. And. Uh, Three may keep a, keep a secret if the two of them are dead, Benjamin Franklin said. And after we had the, uh, the memo and everything was good, this appeared from Android TV rumors. For my Norwegian followers, the operator Get, who recently got bought by Taylor Company, will soon update their Get box with an Android TV setup. Uh, good news, Netflix will be uh, also be included. Don't have to, any picture of the box yet, unfortunately. This hit us like a... Bomb! It was what? <laughs> uh, nobody knew, and uh, nobody uh, uh, could. Uh, yeah, nobody we had no idea where they actually got the information or what they based it on. Because yeah, it, it was uh, it was uh, kind of shocking. So uh, uh, one day passed, and the promotion pictures uh, came into Dagblad and Tech.no. We haven't seen those. It's uh, it's new for us. But what? We, uh, okay, we have uh, integrated uh, Chromecast. That's new to me. Uh, and uh, we have these features. And this is actually the box. It's a picture of the box, and it's not production ready yet. So uh, nobody knew. Uh, this was uh, kind of scary. So we did some investigation, and it turned out that the marketing persons uh, called the salesperson to say, oh, we have this new cool feature, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the salesperson called the customer, and the customer called the media. The uh, problem was that we, those two people are supposed to uh, have read the memo. So lesson learned is RTFM. Read the memo. Uh, this should, uh, shouldn't have happened. But uh, on the bright side, uh, you know uh, there's a platform called iPhone or uh, iOS. Uh, this is from the, the image is from 2010, where uh, some guy found an uh, iPhone 3GS lying on a bar. So this is kind of the Apple way of doing it, things. We leak something somewhere, and it pops up, and the media goes crazy. Uh, some important person high up in Get said, OK, <laughs> this is actually really cool. We weren't supposed to do this, but uh, now it's out there. It's, uh, it's awesome. And the, the expectancy for this box is huge. Uh, we get a lot of feedback of people wanting the box. 
uh, we have uh, new customers uh, wanting. Yeah, people people are calling in uh, asking, can they get it? So yeah, that's kind of strange for something that's not released or talked about. So. It's a, it's a new for us. So what does the future hold? Uh, what we're gonna make uh, now? We have we have uh, done the box. It's gonna be out there, and we have a lot of uh, things in the pipeline. <coughs> Yeah, so I can't talk about all the business secrets, of course, but uh, what we do know, and this, uh, of course, is going to come, is uh, movie rentals, um, seamless uh, IPTV and DVB support. Um, we're going to do sound and language selections, of course, uh, favorite channel, binge watching, everything you're used to from the net version of Get. Uh, also, movie purchases, which is on the existing box, uh, profiling, which is a very simple solution on the existing box. We want to do something bigger there. Uh, we're going to have to integrate with the legacy platform and of course everyone's favorite topic, radio. Everybody loves the radio. Yeah. And uh, for the future we have um, some ideas. Uh, this is just <coughs> start up, but uh, we want to do some smart home integration uh, if possible. Uh, we want to uh, perhaps give you content suggestion by machine learning. Uh, since now we actually do get the data of uh, what people are watching and what's most popular. And uh, we want to perhaps give signal quality indicators saying uh, what's wrong with your signal, trying to do stuff. So uh, many, many things in the future. Yeah, so to conclude, um, this, uh, this selection of, um, of a system kind of gave us more control. Um, we uh, get modern hardware and software, and we were able to kind of decide for ourselves what we wanted. And we get a lot of freedom to alter the system, where uh, previously we used to have uh, perhaps one release a year or two um, with kind of very small fixes. We now can uh, alter the TV platform based on user requests, which yeah. is a big thing. So that's uh, we have one minute for uh, questions. If anybody has something, yes. Uh, yeah, um, I was just thinking. I realized that you have a very large technological legacy, but is there still a point in keeping the old stable technology and not doing everything over fixed loops of what I system like that you would like to go in the future? Or what's the reason for keeping the old technology? Okay, so the question is, uh, why keep the cable and uh, not just go for streaming? Yeah, um, as I said, there's um, there's uh, problems with the backbone if you do that. If everyone is watching like uh, the Olympics um, at the same time, you using unicast and streaming, you will get uh, very very bad uh, TV experience. Uh, it just doesn't scale to that level. And also, uh, it's uh, it's uh, about the delays. Because if you watch something live on uh, on streaming, it actually can happen 5, 10, 40 seconds after what's live. So, uh, so uh, the cable network gives you the live feed the, the second uh, something happens. But uh, if you... If you see uh, perhaps a football match and uh, you see uh, somebody going towards goal, you get a ping on your phone that, oh, somebody scored. And then it happens on the TV afterwards, and that's not cool. Yeah, but that being said, the market is moving towards streaming in various solutions. Yeah, we um, want streaming. Yeah, <laughs> and um, the plan was to release the box with uh, streaming only to begin with. So, yeah. Any anyone else? No built-in Chromecast. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> uh, I can't uh, kind of discuss the business or technical. Uh, stuff. Yes? Um, so you mentioned the approach to the yes voting and you like ten thousand heads in the same system. Um, is there no way to like run a full series of tutorials on Google? Yeah, so the question is uh, can you run the Google tests locally? Um, sure you can do that and that's what the hardware provider is doing. Uh, it's kind of difficult to integrate into like your build system. Uh, and uh, one of those test suites is a very large manual document, so that won't do. But we have access to it, so we can do it ourselves. 
Yes, then the time is up. Yeah, thank you to Thomas and Thomas. <laughs>